So how did this start? Ah, so this, this is a piece of red cedar that um, was planted on the property about 40 years ago. And we've been on this property for 43 years. And so um, this was planted down the bottom of the property. Uh, obviously it grew to be quite a substantial tree. This is the actual buttress root system of the tree. It, um, it was a difficult and considered choice to take out a red cedar and the reason that we actually took it out in the end was because my mother's property totally dependent on solar for its electricity and uh, you know, had just recently purchased a brand new solar system and during the two winters of last year and the year before uh, she was unable to fully charge her battery system and so it was either a matter of removing the tree or essentially moving the house and um, as I said, it, yeah, it was a, quite a difficult decision to make because of the previous sort of all my association with cedar was the cedar getters and sort of the rape and pillage of this environment so um uh you know yeah it was a difficult decision and and um you know i have no regrets in actually you know making that decision uh, because uh, i now am honoring every single component of this tree by one, taking a whole lot of material, red cedar, beautiful wood to carve, down to Eora, which is a place of work for me, and um, to give students a beautiful quality material and good quality tools is um, a really beautiful introduction into sort of the art world and the creative world. So, yeah, so this um, piece actually took both my sons, Raphael and Ethan, uh, about a week to dig out with crowbars. And then eventually we were able to free it up, lay it into a trailer, which essentially crushed my trailer and, and um, bottomed it out. And because it was down the bottom of the property, not too far to come, probably about two or 300 meters. And with a big four wheel drive land cruiser, I was able to essentially just drag this piece of timber up on top of the um, trailer. So I had no idea about what this piece was going to be and I really made a conscious choice to make sure that I didn't pigeonhole it and I didn't come up with ideas prior to me actually seeing it in this inverted state, which I knew was always the way it was gonna be presented, this piece of wood, but I had no idea on what it would present to me. So I work very much intuitively with a bit of over intellectual override because I've kind of got skills. I know what results I'm going to get, but I very much respond to the material itself. So as soon as this piece presented itself to me, um, I was confronted by, by this angel form and um, yeah, my brother just recently passed. And so this is, yeah, a response to that. And I don't consider it to be Chico's angel, but I consider it to be more Chico as an angel. So he was a very flamboyant character. And so here I am adorning him with sort of jewels and that he liked to dress up and perform. He was also a really generous guy. And so this reaching out sort of arm or this wing to sort of embrace or to give, but also this idea of sort of hopefully nurture or shielding from, you know, external. It's a, that, it's that give but boundaries, so it's that kind of, yeah, this is, an, this is what I'm gonna give you, but please don't sort of step too far into my space. So it's that give to the shield. So 
that's hence the idea of the shield. Um, Chico probably didn't do enough shielding and gave away too much. So yeah, this is the result. And for me, it was just straight away impact. You know, it's quite abstract and, you know, I haven't finished it yet. And I'm not sure about kind of components like this. And I'm not sure exactly how much detail I'm going to go into this piece, but it's an ongoing piece. And it's very much with the intention of the process is the biggest thing for me in all of my art. Um, the end result is a secondary thought or it doesn't actually really kind of come into it. Some people at the end of a body of work sort of say, oh, how about exhibiting that work? And um, once it's finished, I kind of like toy with that idea and often I'm given an opportunity to, you know, to exhibit uh, my work, which I have been doing down in Sydney a bit. So um, I have, yeah, so certainly the process and, you know, this is something I'll just live with, with the idea that, you know, maybe it goes into a public space one day or maybe it just sort of stays here. Who knows? It doesn't really matter too much. I'm certainly not in it for the fame and glory. <laughs> Where do you think Chico would like this to be? I would like, well, I think that Chico, because he was an expose, I think that he would like it to be in a kind of pretty prominent public space and not sort of, you know, in this sort of private Terrania Creek in, you know, uh, a space. Although, however, like we do have a lot of artists sort of coming through here, so it actually, interestingly, it actually gets quite a bit of exposure and it sparks quite a bit of interest. So I would like to see it in the regional gallery in Lismore, in their foyer area. Um, and we'll, we'll see, we've got a retrospective, probably in about two or three years of Chico's work that we've been accepted to um, show. I mean, COVID sort of thrown that all a little bit out, but um, certainly we're planning on having a full show retrospective at the Lismore Regional Gallery, which is our local gallery. And um, yeah, we'll see how that, this might be part of it, as a bit of a sort of a homage or or it might be solely Chico's work that we show. We're still sort of in that limbo. But we've also got Jasmine, my partner, who is a dear friend of Chico's. Also my parents, Dennis and Melina, who would like to, you know, probably contribute to the show and um, with a direct relationship of their work to Chico. So whether it's been informative for Chico or whether it's a response. So I, I've found that, um, you know, since my brother's passing, that pretty much every piece of work that I do is it comes back to him.